And so this weekend, you will be submitting your uh, block two drafts. As always, you don't have to provide final uh, clean versions of your work. All you have to do is submit a draft so that I, uh, other professors, your teachers first and foremost, can see that you are on the right track, that you're making a progress. And so what we're going to do today is uh, open a few challenges and go through them question by question. But before I do that, let me remind you, or let me go again over what you need to do as a team member. So some team members or some teams have team members who may not be very active. We receive a few emails every day from teams uh, that say, oh, I'm the only one who is doing all the work. Everybody else is not doing anything. Although we didn't get many like this this week. So uh, it, it, we did get a few in, in the beginning of the project. By now, it seems like most of the teams are doing well. But there are still some teams that are sort of stuck. So I'm not quite sure how to proceed. And uh, here is what you need to do as a uh, active, diligent, responsible team member. Here is what you need to do to make sure that your team gets unstuck and does a good job. So one, uh, when you will be doing the peer evaluations, when uh, if there is a team member on your team who is not doing a good job, make sure to give those people low peer evaluations. Again, if they do a good job, obviously don't be greedy, give them fights. But if there is someone on your team who is not uh, actively participating, uh, obviously give them a low grade and so this way we will know that there is a problem and this way we will contact them and uh, talk about you know what's going on and see how we can help um, and actually let me make a note here because I needed to send an email to one of the students like that mm -hmm. second um, Keep sending emails to that student keep sending reminders to that student uh, there is always a chance that the person could have been sick or traveling or maybe busy at school and so more likely than not if that happened if the person was away for a few days the person sort of feels a little guilty a little uncomfortable doesn't quite know how to get back on track how to reconnect with the team and so your positive encouraging email might actually help here a lot so instead of being confrontational it always helps to say hey johnny uh, you haven't communicated with us for a week are you okay is everything clear uh, there are some things where we need your help. Uh, if you let me know, I'll, I'll tell you where we have to work or what you have to work on. Or maybe even say, hey, Johnny, you signed up to work in question two, so I haven't seen any progress. It's all good. Do you need any help? If you got lost, here is the challenge that we are working on. Here is a part that you need to work on. So give that person some direction, give that person some encouragement. It usually helps much more <clears throat> than using nasty language and confrontation. And three, obviously, if not much has been done, here is what you need to do. You need to create a shared <clears throat> Google Docs or Dropbox file, um, unless you're using Slack or Trello or some more sophisticated platforms. <clears throat> but Google Docs or um, uh, Dropbox, Google Docs or Dropbox file will probably do a good job. And here is how you do it. Uh, let me share my screen and show you what you need to do, so that your team loves you for being proactive, being wise, and being smart. So you go to uh, Google Docs. Can you please confirm that you see my screen with Google Docs, um, with the Google Docs file on it? Can you please type yes? Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Rishi. And so you just go and open a Google Docs file, and I think you can go directly here, right? Uh, to open a Google Docs file, all you have to do is to have a Google account and I assume you all have one of those and if you don't you can create one for free and then you simply set up your uh, template for your file so you would have a uh, uh, you would have a um, title page and so here on the title page uh, all you will do you will type for example you know put culture logo in the middle uh, you can put um, so maybe small right and then you put a uh, clients logo Bit, right, and then you put team number. Let's say, for example, I don't know, today we have team number 111, and then uh, here you will provide either a table or maybe, <clears throat> uh, maybe a, a plain format, and you will put the names here. So it would be team member, uh, or you know, name one, 
name one that let's assume that's a name and that person let's say is from uh, USA and let's say that person's email is uh, name dot one at gmail dot com and then later on you will tell what the person was responsible for for example copy editor and then you will put the name name of the next person name two let's say this person is from China uh, email is name two at gmail dot com and so on and so on right and maybe this person was coordinator, or maybe and block one, and so on. So you would put the third person, and so on. So that's your nice, neat, informative title page, right? So it gives me all the information. You may add some graphics here. So let's, for example, put here graphics. So uh, obviously you will put the actual logos and the actual graphics, but that's the structure. Then for the next page, you will uh, allocate space for executive summary, right? And so here in the executive summary, um, again, we will, in fact, you know what, maybe even the next page we will put table of contents, right? And you'll again add it at the end of contents. And you know how to create a table of contents in uh, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or any of those, right? I think if you go here, there should be somewhere a link. I'm not using much with the yeah, table of contents. So you'll put it right here and it will automatically create one uh, using the headers that you use. So you just go to insert, table of contents, and it will do the job for you. Again, if you don't know how to use it, just Google how to create, how to create a table of contents, and in your case, in Google Docs, right? And you will find a nice step-by-step -step instruction or a two-minute video that explains to you how to do it. Then you will have the executive summary, and again, you'll do it later, and we'll go through this in more detail uh, in a week or two when you will be working on that. Then you allocate space for um, block one questions, market analysis, right? And we went through this last weekend. If you're here for the first time uh, and you didn't attend last meeting last weekend, then uh, you will be able to see the recording uh, that is posted on the resource page and you will be able to see uh, how we went through those questions. Now today let's work on block two and we will do it together for a couple of companies. Now since you made it to this meeting, you'll get a chance to decide uh, uh, what companies will work on. So if you give me the names of the companies that you want me to review today, I will make those a priority and we will try to answer the block two, which is marketing, right, together. So marketing. So. Please give me a company that you want me to work. Okay, a bobo. Very good, very good. So let me open the challenges from a bobo and we will take a look and together we'll work on that challenge. Now, can you please confirm that you see the above challenge on your screens? Because last time I think I shared only Google Chrome and so when I was showing other files, you couldn't see them. So, um, I see Adventure Addicted, and Shia says, yes, you see a bobo, right? I assume that you see a bobo here. All right, let's see together what a bobo wants you to do in block two, and then we'll try to answer those questions together. So market analysis, this is something we did together. Marketing. So we will have to describe and explain the best promotion channels, your message, and your promotion materials. But before we do that, let me give you a trick or a trick tip here or a secret. Let me um, reveal a secret or kind of, you know, a secret tip, what you need to do before you get all the way into promotion channels. What you should think first is who will be making the decisions about buying the product. So I'll call it 2.1 decision makers. And by the way, I think our instructions require that we use Times New Roman so I'll switch to that right away so that we have Times New Roman, font size 12, single space. So this way it will be all real thing even before we get into, uh, even before we start creating a clean version of the report. And here also uh, block two, you might want to put that in like capital so that it's um, uh, marketing. So before we get into all the details, how exactly we're going to advertise our product, let's first together think whom are we going to advertise it to. So who is buying that product? 
So um, let's call it not, not even decision makers, but let's call it purchasing decision makers. So people who buy. So Abovo, those of you who don't know, this company makes chocolate, right? And so the question then is, who makes the decisions to buy chocolate? So can you give me a tip? Can you give me the answer to this question? So who are the people uh, who make the decisions to buy chocolate? So in your answers, either in chat or in Q&A, could you please tell me who you think makes the decisions to buy chocolates? Uh, parents, children, uh, you are definitely on the right track, Rishi, so let's put it, yeah, we'll put it in a bullet list form. So children, parents, that's very good. So children, let's describe these demographics. So children would be what, like ages probably, I'm thinking nine to maybe 15, right? Older, that's not really children anymore. Younger children probably don't quite make, well, maybe eight, don't quite make those decisions. Parents make them, right? And they, uh, what, what, what would you say about children as consumers? What, what are they like? Right? For example, maybe they like bright, fun colors, right? <clears throat> bright, fun colors. Maybe like stories. What else do children like? I don't know. Um, uh, like funny characters, right? So I don't know, things like that. What about parents? What do you know about parents? Can you give me some descriptives of parents? Because again, before, oh yeah, somebody said free toys. That's very good, Richie. Yeah, children like free toys. Yeah, maybe that's something you should put in the box. That's a very, very good. Yeah, somebody said, yeah, very good. Now, parents, can you describe parents? Again, the reason I'm asking that is because we need to first understand the profile of the consumer before we are able to kind of get in their heads and know how to sell to them, essentially. So when we talk about parents, what are parents like? So, and again, Rishi says that maybe something educational, kids like educational, let's call it stuff, right? All right, so what about parents? What are parents like? Let's say, for example, they are, I don't know, age 25, uh, 45, and maybe we can even say grandparents, but we can work on, on that later. What else do we know about parents? What parents like? So they like to make their kids happy, right? What else? Want to see their kids, I don't know, healthy. What else do we know about parents? Yeah, Emily, yeah, exactly. Health is definitely a very important thing. What else? Anything else here? Uh, very good, so think about that. Now there are more categories of people who might wanna buy chocolate, not only kids and parents. For example, let's say adults um, in general, right? Or maybe uh, adults in love, or maybe uh, adults who like sophisticated products and you can describe them in general so these people you know like to have fun um, like to try new things maybe right uh, I don't know you might want to even say a few things about money like for example for kids don't care about money or price parents probably are sensitive to price right so these are all decisions, or I mean, these are all the scriptures that will guide your decision as you make your, uh, make your uh, develop your marketing campaign. Adults in general, probably also sensitive to price, right? So they're not willing to pay too much. Now, adults in love, like Valentine's Day comes, you know, let's say, uh, e.g. before Valentine's Day. You know what Valentine's Day is, right? I'm not sure we have people here from all kinds of cultures. Do you know what Valentine's Day is? Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, exactly. As Valentine's Day, Day presents, as Miriam says, and Valentine's Day uh, presents, that's the day of the people who are in love, right? And so in some cultures, the tradition here is to buy chocolates as a gift, right? So when they are in love. Uh, Emily, I do see your comment about uh, head office of retail shops. Yes, we'll definitely talk about that separately. This is an extremely important comment that you made. We definitely want to make about, uh, talk about that uh, in more detail. So adults in love, so they want to impress 
their, I don't know, boyfriend, girlfriend uh, with an exquisite gift. You know, let's see if I can spell exquisite. Um, exotic, right? Or not, or nice gift. I'm not sure if I'll be able to spend spelling exquisite, exquisite correctly, right? So they want to buy a very nice gift, not very sensitive to price. In fact, in many cases, when people are trying to buy a gift for someone they love, the whole point is to buy something more expensive. So they wouldn't buy like a you know a cheap uh, generic chocolate. They want to buy, buy something special, right? And sometimes you have also adults who may have uh, very unique, very sophisticated tastes. You know, people who wouldn't eat uh, re regular generic <clears throat> generic chocolate. They want to buy something very, very special. And so these people have money, right? Like unusual things, um, value exotic uh, products and things like that. And again, here I'm not giving you the exhaustive list and I'm deliberately describing every possible purchasing uh uh, group of people or you know um, decision maker group and so obviously in your strategy you might want to focus on one only or maybe two of those and maybe there are more groups but I'm giving you an idea of how you can describe the target population so when you're developing your marketing strategy you're thinking about a specific group of people who would be buying that product and so that definitely should help you um, guide your decisions as you're moving uh, you know towards your marketing strategy and um, so Okay, let me just check one more thing here while we're talking. I just want to make sure that our, uh, um, yes, our speaker is not here. Okay, let's move on. So now that you've decided on the uh, right decision-making, uh, I mean, on the uh, right decision-making group, we can move on to the next category, which is, um, in our case, it will be 2.2, two, uh, two, 2 which is distribution cha um, promotion channels. So the question here would be, um, how, through which channels would you be advertising to these people? And again, I'm not going to give you uh, detailed answers, but let's together try to think what is the best way to advertise to each of these groups. Like for example, for children, where would you advertise so that children see and like your ads? Would it be TV? Would it be newspapers? Would it be social media? Would it be billboards? Would it be something else, magazines? So give me a few ideas where you can reach children with your advertisement. So uh, some people say TV, and that's good. Now, the, there are some problems with TV that it's, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but TV is very expensive, right? And so uh, it may not be the best strategy. Yes, it's a good way to reach children, or for that matter, parents, but it's an expensive distribution channel. It's very broad. It covers a huge number of people, and because of that, it costs a lot of money. And a relatively small company like a Bobo may just simply not have the money. It's not that they don't have the money. It just for them, it may not be worthwhile because the product is still relatively unique and not everyone will be buying it. Buying it. So paying for advertisement to everyone may be not a very wise strategy. You might want to find something that is more focused. But yes, TV definitely is one of the options. What else? Somebody said YouTube video, very good. Uh, YouTube video is very good. You can select the audience who will see the product. So yeah, social media, we'll talk about those in a few minutes also. What else do we have here? Books. Oh, Emily, that's very, you know, long term. Uh, again, not easy, but yeah, I guess if you had some sort of, this is a very interesting idea, actually. Newspapers. Who said newspapers? Uh, Emily, well, for, as, a, as an advertisement channel, it's a viable option. But for kids, I'm not sure how many kids read newspapers, maybe for parents. Billboards, again, another one. What else? Let, let's list everything and then I'll let you decide which one is the best one for your specific audience. So Instagram, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, that's social media, right? So let's, let's list them all here. Social media would have Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, what, what else we have here, Twitter. Uh, so LinkedIn, again, not sure if it would be a good one for chocolate, but potentially it could be you know, all of those. Magazines, very good, very good, Sham. Magazines, again, there are some specialized children's mag magazines and in many cases, yeah. Snapchat, very good. Um, so all kinds of interesting options. Now, your decision here or your goal here is to look at each of these categories and each of these advertisement channels and select one that will give you the best um, um, match. But let's talk about pros and cons of each of those first. 
So again, once you know what the pros and cons are, you will know very well uh, which one is the best choice for you. So let's go pro and con, right? And then, so what would be the pros of TV? Can you give me the pros of TV? Uh, yeah, oh, by the way, yeah, somebody said Google Ads. Very good, very good. That should have gone as number one. Very good. Google Ads. So when we look at the TV, so it's very broad, right? Reach, reaches, uh, reaches a large audience. So that's definitely a big, big, uh, you know, yeah. And most people watch TV, so it gives you access to just about everyone. But the big con is it's too broad and very expensive. Right? We'll put another one. So it's very expensive. Books. So what else we have here? YouTube videos. Um, uh, sharp targeting. Uh, those of you who don't know, in YouTube and social media, you can literally select who sees your ads in terms of you know characteristics. You can literally say, show these ads only to people of this age, from this country, with this level of education, with these interests. So it allows you to be extremely, extremely precise. Now, unlike on TV, where you just pay a fixed fee and everybody sees your, uh, your ad, and even if nobody cares, you still pay. With YouTube and social media, in many cases, you can choose uh, to pay only for people who saw your ad and clicked on it. So there may be literally options there. You have all kinds of different arrangements, but you can be paying only if people click on your ad or only if they visit your uh, page and uh, website. And so that allows you, on the one hand, it, it makes it kind of more expensive per person who clicked in terms of the price, but you only pay for those who are interested in your product. So in many cases, that's becoming a much more um, uh, viable marketing strategy. Um, so sharp targeting. Uh, well, maybe small audience, but that's what you need anyway, right? Same thing with social media. Uh, advertising in books, again, uh, you would have to do the same analysis and think about pros and cons. So pros and cons, uh, what's good about advertising in books? Uh, so it may be an interesting way. It's going to be a small audience, but again, potentially you might want to get, you know, so. With newspapers, what are the pros of newspapers and cons of newspapers? Give me a couple since we started working about that. So it can be expensive, uh, I mean, here, can be expensive, right? Um, not everyone reads newspapers. But then, you know, good thing is that maybe, I don't know, maybe people who read newspapers, maybe they're a little smarter, a little bit more sophisticated, right? Smarter, more sophisticated, because, you know, uh, sort of people who are shallow and I'm not really, a, right, let me retract that. Most people these days just read the news uh, on social media or maybe just watch TV. But there are still some people who find quality content uh, interesting and necessary and usually newspapers tend to be a little bit more kind of curated, a little bit more, um, you know, higher end content. And so they still buy newspapers. And so people who still buy newspapers, especially if those are kind of serious newspapers like New York Times or Washington Post, uh, I don't know much about European newspapers, like, you know, maybe Das Bild in Germany, although that one is a little bit more fun. Um, so those tend to be a little bit more sophisticated individuals. So if you, for example, wanted to advertise, <clears throat> so newspaper, would it be the best channel to advertise to children? Obviously not. Would it be the best channel to advertise to people in love? Probably not again. Would it be a good channel to advertise to people who like sophisticated products? Hmm, that's interesting. So people who are paying for newspapers today, they are probably you know, more sophisticated and probably like those exotic, interesting products. So that may be a good channel. So that's you know, kind of the line of thinking that you take. Now, once you've decided on your um, uh, promotion channel, you will describe it in detail. Again, you will explain why you think it's the best channel or why it's the best uh, for this specific product. And then it would be a very good idea here not only to describe where you will advertise, but also how. And so let me highlight that here because many people make this mistake again and again and again and again. And you don't want to make that mistake. Now, what many people do, and I've seen it so many times, it literally drives me crazy. People say, and you should advertise on social media. Boom, done, move on to the example of the ad. Not enough. Uh, you want to explain in much more detail how. And here is what should go into this section. So you should say, 
uh, oops, let me remove this um, uh, highlight. You should explain things like, for example, um, uh, where is my bullet list here? Uh, yeah, right here. You should explain, for example, how, how frequently, right? For how long? Again, if you, for example, use social media, you know, uh, should it be every day? Should it be at a specific time? Uh, at what time, you know? Then if it's social media, obviously you should start with audience, you know, describe, you know, age, uh, demographics or demographics in general. Demographics, uh, interests, and whatever else needs to go into that profile. So for example, let's say you decided to advertise on social media, let's decide you decided to advertise to people in love. Probably it's going to be age, let's say ages, I don't know, 16 to 20 uh, or maybe to 35. That's when people usually are in love, right? And then maybe they will be, uh, I don't know, uh, age. Maybe they will be, I don't know, mainly let's say men, right? Male, because it seems like it's a tradition that men buy chocolates for women. So things like that. Interests, again, you might want to describe what they like. And YouTube, um, Google AdWords, social media, they allow you to choose those interests. Maybe they are, you know, literally in love, and sometimes the social media know that. Maybe they, uh, I don't know, uh, love, like fun, or maybe, I don't know, maybe they have some specific interests, or like, I don't know, um, uh, romance, literature, uh, so, and things like that. So you can decide all kinds of, you know, of those characteristics, and you should do the analysis. You should go maybe even into those social media and play with some of those words and give your client all those detailed answers in terms of how frequently, how long, at what time. Describe all of that, right? Um, if it's, for example, um, newspaper, then maybe, uh, you know, say how much or how big, right? So maybe it should be like one quarter of the page or maybe it should be one half of the page or maybe it should be more. Very importantly, budget. I cannot stress that enough where you explain how much it will cost, right? So you say cost per click, for example, uh, in the, oh, by the way, location, we forgot about that. So location, and you want to advertise in a specific area. So for example, there is no point in advertising your product, for example, chocolate on national TV, when you have the store for that product only in one city. In that case, it would make much more sense to advertise either on local TV or in a local newspaper, or you go on the social media and you advertise for that specific location, right? So now budget, cost per click, if it's, you know, for example, uh, social media, or maybe cost per um, 1,000 views, usually that's how they count that. So do your research and see how much it costs to advertise on Facebook, for example. I can tell you that depending on the audience, Facebook will charge you somewhere between $1 to $3 per thousand views. So if you, for example, spend uh, $10 a day, it will be your ad will be shown to maybe uh, 10,000 people a day, sometimes even more if it's an um, audience that nobody wants to advertise to, but at the same time, it may be much less if it's an audience that everybody wants to advertise to. So depending on what you have or maybe a price per billboard uh, per week, right? Or maybe a price per minute of the ad on TV. So you should explain what kind of calculations go into your uh, uh, budget. And then in the end, ultimately you say total budget. And you would say, for example, I don't know, let's say $1,000 per day or per month. Uh, or per month or maybe per years, whatever the budget. But you should provide all those calculations. And so simply saying you should advertise on social media, that's not good. I guarantee that every single client that you work with, including a mobile, for sure guaranteed thought about um, advertising on social media. One of the reasons they haven't done it perhaps, or maybe they're not doing it well because they don't know how and where and how it works and what they need to do. And that's where you come. So you must, you definitely must do your own research before you make those recommendations. Simply saying, oh, advertise on TV, put a billboard, doesn't tell anything. As I said, every manager of every company had thought about that. So you need to explain why, because this is the audience that you're trying to target. 
this is where they are and this is what they see, this is what they like, and this promotion channel will work for them the best. Now, to advertise in that promotion channel, this is when you should place your ad, this is how big it should be, uh, this is how frequently it should appear, this is how long it should stay there, this is how much it will cost per click, per view, per month, per week. Uh, this is how long we think you should advertise. And given all those estimations, given all those calculations, this is how much it will cost you altogether. So give some of those numbers so that they can think about it. And it's a very good exercise for you too. So uh, I've been doing a lot of advertisement online for my own uh, products and companies. And I tell you, it takes some time to learn how it works, but it's not that difficult. It's kind of scary the first step because it's so much, but once you get into it, it's actually even a lot of fun. And so I strongly encourage you that you go deeper than simply saying or advertise on TV. And then obviously once you're done with that, so you go to 2.3 sample ad. Um, and so here I'm not going to give you any examples per se, I'll just give you some tips. Well, first of all, you have to decide what kind of ad you will be providing as a sample. So it can be in your case, it can be, for example, let's say if you wanted to uh, advertise in a magazine, um, in a newspaper, uh, or maybe social media. So you can provide an example of a picture, right? that will appear on that uh, page or on that billboard or on that uh, Facebook page. And so it would be, you know, whatever design you want to use. It can be something fun. It can be something informative. It can be all kinds of things. Uh, if I have time in the end, I can even show you some of the ads that we use for Exculture Kids. But uh, I'll, I'll give you access to all of the reports that won the competition last year. And you can see what kinds of ads, what kinds of pictures the winning teams from the last semester used. I'll show you where those are in a few minutes. Uh, if you decided to do TV, for example, or maybe again, social media, um, or maybe YouTube, uh, one of the options there you have to put a video. And so here it would be like, for example, script of a video. And so here you would describe, uh, you know, you probably will not be able to make a video, but you can describe it in your own words, like for example, you can say, you know, uh, it's like uh, 15 seconds long, for example, and the storyline goes like this, you know, the camera shows a child eating chocolate and being very happy. And then the next shot, the parents see that the child is happy and they say, oh, so nice, I need to buy more chocolate for them, or something like that. It's probably a very bad script, script but that's basically what you described today, right? Uh, or maybe you decided to di distribute flyers, right? And so in that case, it would be a sample design of the flyer. And so you don't need to uh, design a very nice, sophisticated, you know, Photoshop, uh, you know, professional ad or picture. All you have to do is describe the main idea. Some teams actually do have people on the team who are very uh, technically savvy, and they would, in many cases, design uh, very sophisticated ads. But you don't have to do that. But now, first of all, you only need a draft. But even for later, it's all about idea. So if you don't have a professionally shot video, it's not a problem. Yeah, but that's basically what you do for this specific uh, week. Now, I want to address one more thing before we move on to the next company. Emily said at some point that you might want to also advertise to um, uh, basically retail store managers, right? And so let's call it um, retail managers here, or retail slash distributors, or retailers, let's call it this way. Uh, retail distribution managers. And so here we are talking about people who manage either a store or a distribution center or a network of the stores. Normally, the clients kind of don't think about that, but in most cases, it may be that they don't even have to advertise to the final product uh, consumer, but instead they need to get into the stores. And so once the product is on the shelf, people will see it and that will be advertisement and they will buy it. And so these people become a little bit more, you know, difficult, different. So here you're not advertising on TV per se. You're not advertising, you know, on social media. So these are serious, you know, uh, pragmatic managers. And so uh, you would want to give them, you know, want numbers and want economic sense, right? Let's call it this way. So uh, these people are pragmatic, so not programmatic, pragmatic. Yeah. So those are the people who don't care about your bright pictures and other things. They usually think, okay, will I be able to sell the product? 
And so it's very important to understand how they think and offer them what they think will bring them profits. So you want to give them some things, uh, you know, uh, some things like, for example, um, um, uh, you know, explain the price of your product, uh, convince them that the product will be successful uh, in their stores. If you have some market research, give them those numbers. If you're willing to offer them maybe some discount, maybe you want to say, okay, buy a container of my product for, or get a container of my product for free and pay to me only after you sell it. So they will say, oh, that's interesting. So it's a free opportunity for me to test a new product. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, uh, it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be a, a big loss for me. So think about what you want to say to them, tell to them so that they think, okay, oh, this a bowl of chocolate. Yeah, I think I want to buy it. I, I think I want to give it a try. And so that's what you do. Now, uh, Kalina is asking where she can find examples from the last semester. Uh, you go to Xculture website, and too bad that you didn't do the exploration here, and you go to winners. And here in the winners, you have the list of all the winners going back like you know, many years. And when you click on best teams, not only can you see who won the competition, but you can also download the complete list of the winning reports from the last semester. And usually you will see about 30 or so of them because it's always impossible to select one best team. So we usually have like one or two teams per category. So if they have 15 clients, that may be like 30 teams, you know, maybe like three winners per each team. And when you click on those, let's open a couple of them just to see out of interest. So business report, team Mary's Pool. Yeah, so that's the company that participates in the project this semester. So as you see, they have a nice title page with a picture and for some reason it wouldn't allow me to open it neatly. Let me see if I can download it or that's okay, I'll just hold down. So as, as we said, they have a nice uh, table of contents. They have a nice executive summary. You see the team, but let's go to section two and see what kind of examples they provided for uh, their um, uh, marketing strategy. So they're still doing segmentation. See like they, they're, thinking about specific uh, categories of people who will be buying the product, like for example, home gardeners for the fertilizer. See, they describe the year, the age, what they like, you know, like a very, very specific style demographics. You see that, you know, that, that's exactly what they do, what we just discussed you should do. So that's a very good report. And so when it comes to promotional channels, let's see what they recommend. So they recommend Facebook, right? And so as you see, they describe who would be the people who will see the ads and they describe the budget and, you know, things like that. And so they talk about, you know, uh, audiences of these uh, media and they talk about YouTube ads and they say how much per day. And so, you know, all of that, they definitely, you know, like describe in great detail. So as you see, they have all kinds of graphs. And so um, uh, very good, so it's a very good name. Now they say what the message should be, oh, by the way, that's something that we missed. So before we get into the uh, sample ad, right? we need to say what the message is. And I forgot about that, 2.3 message. So what you're trying to say. So if you are advertising to kids, maybe the message should be something about fun. You know, like for example, eat a bowl of chocolate. Oops. Eat a bowl of chocolate. Oops, sorry. And all the chocolate and you'll have fun or maybe the message, you know, kids. And again, this is probably a bad message, but just to give you examples. For parents, the message could be, um, it's not each, uh, give your kids the chocolate uh, and they will be happy. And they'll love you, right? Or maybe, you know, people in love, uh, you know, give the gift, of sophistication or I don't know uh, maybe you know nothing say nothing says I love you like a box of exotic chocolates or something like that and so once you know what the main message is it doesn't have to be a slogan it's just you know the main idea you want to keep that will inform your uh, ad design so if you want to focus on you know sophistication and you know saying I love you with a box of sophisticated chocolates that's what the video may be about, or maybe that's what the flyer may be about. And so let's see if they have an example of them. Um, yeah, and so yeah, see they have a nice example of, a, um, uh, of an ad that they can use. So it's Mary's Poop, so it's fertilizer. Finding how today we switch between chocolate and manure, right? 
So, but anyway, they even designed an ad that shows what it, you know, like a sample that shows what the ad might look like. And as you see, they put here, you know, a nice logo, pictures of cute llamas, uh, pictures of happy gardeners, and then explain why the product is good, you know, efficient, safe, organic, clean, very good. And they provide, you know, even uh, recommend that you get a free sample. And I'm not sure, it seems like this is something they would put in the stores, but you know, you have this example here. Again, this is actually a pretty well-designed ad, and I'm not sure if you want to design it so much, but you can try. All right, so um, somebody also said uh, Adventure Addicted, so let's go through Adventure Addicted quickly, and then hopefully we'll have a few more minutes for questions. So yes, one more time, if you wanted to see uh, the reports from the last years, you go to exculture.org, winners, and then you click on the uh, tab for the specific year of the best teams, and that's where you will see all the best reports uh, so like 10, 20 of them, and you can open them and take a look, like Unicheck, for example. That's another one that is also participating this year. As you can see, a very nice new uh, title page, uh, yeah, table of contents. This looks very, very good. No wonder they won. So as you can see, they even use some nice graphics specific to the client. Executive summary. This is a very, very good job. And so they even have nice infographics here. So let's go through our... Uh, template one more time, but this time we'll do it for um, Adventure Addicted. So somebody said that, you're, uh, that we have here people from Adventure Addicted. Same thing, table of contents, executive summary, block one for block two. Again, you think about who would be the people who would buy that product. And if you watched the webinar with Adventure Addicted, uh, what has been two days ago, <clears throat> they talked that they have two audiences. They have young people who want to have adventures, who want to go on the trips. And then two companies that would like to give sponsored the events, sponsor the trips uh, for marketing purposes. And so you would describe those two audiences. So young people, probably ages 16 to 30 maybe, you know, people who love fun, people who can go on a trip. And then, uh, you know, they like uh, extreme sports. They probably are very healthy. They probably care about their health and fitness as well as about the nature and things like that. <clears throat> when you're talking about people who are... Um, uh, buying or managers of the companies that potentially can sponsor uh, adventure addicted events. Again, here you probably have a little bit old, older managers uh, who think about numbers and they do cold calculations. If I invest in this company, if I support these adventure addicted guys, will I get enough publicity to get my money back? So think about their profile and what they think and what they like and how they make decisions. Once you've decided on that, you decide on the promotion channel. So if you want to advertise to young people who love adventures, probably the best way to, to go would be what? Actually, let me ask you this. Yeah. So Adventure Addicted sells cool uh, adventurous trips. And so uh, what would be the best channel to reach young people who like adventures, who like extreme sports, <clears throat> who like um, um, travel, who like nature, who like fitness? So what is the best way to reach people like that? Give me a few examples. Anyone? Um, if you ask me, I would say probably social media, because that's very good. <clears throat> there are you know, groups specifically dedicated to those topics. Uh, those are the types of interests that are easy to define, and as a result, easy to choose that your ad is shown to people who specifically are that age who specifically like extreme sports, who specifically like to travel. Maybe even, you know, you can target the specific income level because, you know, those kinds of things are not uh, inexpensive. So if you go to a different country to have an adventure trip, in many cases, it's several thousand dollars. And so you might want to say that, you know, I want people with this level of income because not everyone can afford those kinds of things, right? Facebook, yes, Emily, I think Facebook would be a very good one. Maybe YouTube, again, especially if you place the ads in videos that talk about extreme sports or show some extreme adventures. So that would be definitely a good way to go. If you want to talk to the managers that can sponsor the company, so that's where it becomes a little trickier. So here you probably want to, I don't know, maybe send letters to them or maybe try to meet with them or maybe advertise in some professional uh, magazines for managers, like Fortune, like, I don't know, Bloomberg or something like that. Or maybe again in, in, in magazines about adventures and extreme sports. So you should think about that and decide on the adventure, I mean, on the best channel to reach a specific audience. <clears throat> then you go uh, and describe how, same thing here, nothing different. Think about your message, right? What are you going to tell them? Like, have the fun of your life, have the trip of your life. 
advertise with us and you will have access to this big audience of young people. So advertise to them. And once you have that, obviously, again, you design your ad. It can be a picture, it can be a video, it can be um, maybe a, um, a billboard, it can be maybe a page in the newspaper, maybe it could be even a letter. So if you decided to send like paper letters to the managers of the potential sponsor companies, maybe you should say what that letter should say. So all of those are viable options. All right, yeah, partnerships with universities and gyms, that's a very good one. True, so many gyms, universities have extreme sports like kayaking, like skateboarding, like paragliding. And so maybe you can advertise directly to them. So that's a very good one. And all right, so I'm going to stop here with my stuff and we have a few more minutes for questions. So if you have questions, uh, raise your hand. I will add you here, share, I see you. So I'll add you right here. And so tell me what you have uh, on your, what's on your mind. Tell me what your question is. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Um, so just to refresh my memory, what do we do for the executive summary? Because I forgot to do that on mine last time. So uh, you didn't have to do it yet. So yeah, the, like, the executive summary would be something you probably will do last. But okay. it is a summary of all your ideas for the executive, for the manager. Oh, so okay. Is that your client? What's your company? What company are you working on? Abovo. Yeah. So that's the second most popular company this semester. We have a total of approximately 140 teams working on this challenge. And so when you guys are done, a bowl will get like this many reports. I'm not kidding you. Like type, you know, a to 140 reports and it will be, so it's uh, like what, uh, 30 pages or so per report, uh, multiply that by 100 or so, like it's like 3,000 to 4,000 pages right there. And so obviously the, the client will not have the time to read all of them. If she wanted to read all of them, she would have to quit her job for a month and uh, do nothing but read your reports. Obviously, she doesn't have the time to do that. And so what she will do is, um, she will just go quickly through the reports and to help her do that, you provide like a one page summary of the ideas that you recommend. So literally there it will be, you know, we recommend that you start selling your product in what country are you thinking about? Did you decide on the country? Um, yeah, I, we decided on like a, the either the UAE or like... Okay. Yeah, United Arab Emirates. So you say we decided to, or we recommend that you. So you literally say recommended country, United Arab Emirates. Maybe a couple of points why. Rich like chocolate, not too far to transport. Then you say um, uh, advertisement. Um, advertise in I don't know TV or social media or whatever. And again, maybe one or two explanations why. Uh, inexpensive, easy to reach the audience, uh, easy targeting. Then you say main message. Uh, nothing says I love you like a box of above chocolate. Sample ad, see page 25. Uh, transportation or budget, you know, for marketing, you know, $10,000 a month or $10,000 a day, whatever you think it should be. Um, then next page. So basically you go, you report section by section and you provide a very, very quick summary so that she can look at that one page and in two minutes understand what you're trying to propose here. And then if she likes it, uh, then she will read the rest of the report. If she doesn't like it, maybe she will even skip it. But that's where you provide this nice, clean summary so that people can see right away what you're proposing. Make sense? Emily, you were next, I think. So what's your question? Uh, Emily, I think your microphone let me unmute you. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, I think I'll let Edison go first. Edison, do you want to go first or next? Yeah. Edison, what was your question? <clears throat> um, my, my question was, since me, Shay, and Emily are on the same team, are doing... Uh, oh, we're on the same team. Uh, yeah, well, we're probably going to win this competition. Not only you all work hard, but you all come to these sessions, you all brainstorm it. That's a very, very good idea. All right, well, impressive. Yes, yeah, so what's your, what's your question? Like when we like when we're doing a project uh, for like our companies, are we helping like just the company or are we helping the people that are buying the chocolates? That's a very, very good you know question, very deep. So uh, well I'll I'll leave it unanswered, but I'll give you some sort of pointers how you can think about answering that question. 
So yes, that's a very good question. So who benefits when your ideas get implemented? Uh, will it be the manager, the owner of the company who will make more money, more profits? Or will those be the people who work at the company who will get jobs and maybe get paid more because now they have to produce more and they, you know, the company is making more money? Or will it be the people who consume this wonderful product and have fun or I don't know, whatever the product is? Uh, or will it be the society at large, you know, as a whole? So uh, that's a very good question. For some products, maybe it will be the answer will be all of the above. Everybody wins. For some products, maybe it's going to be only, you know, maybe only the owner makes the money. Everybody else sort of, you know, stays where they are. Or maybe it will be the consumers who will benefit the most. So that's a very good question. And you might want to ask that before you finalize your marketing strategy, because, you know, depending on the answers that may determine how you build your uh, marketing strategy. Very good question. How about you, em Emily? What was your question? Um, I've actually got two questions. Okay, go ahead. Number one, um, if we do decide to change uh, the project like for another company, it, when we do the survey, do we have to also do block one for that company as well? Uh, well, yes and no. First of all, yes, you can change your company anytime. So if at some point you decide that you want to instead work on something else, you can. Second, uh, you don't have to go back and redo the old survey that you missed. Let's say you decided to switch your company today. So it doesn't mean that you now have to get a new link for block one survey and submit that draft uh, again. No, no need. Although, as you will be submitting a copy of your block two, and if you already have block one anyway, I assume you want to work on it anyway, you can submit both. So this way I will show it to your teachers, parents, uh, you know, if you, have, if, if you are in a class with a teacher, uh, and for me, I will also see that you're making a progress. But no, you don't really have to go back and redo anything. As I said, it's okay to include it with the next survey so we see that you're making progress. But between us, as I said, the main point or the main goal of these weekly surveys, it's not so much to evaluate your work and give you some sort of a grade or, you know, punish someone who is not making a progress. It's more to prompt you to do something every week. Uh, you see, Emily, when we started this project, a few years ago uh, for the first semester or two, we didn't have those weekly surveys. Uh, what we did at that time, we would say, okay, so here is your team, here are your uh, team members, uh, see you in two months when the project is over, when you have your report. And so what, what happened often was that many teams didn't do anything. They would just, you know, have some fun for two months or maybe they'll have some occasional discussions but didn't really put anything on paper. And then two days before the deadline, that's when they become like, oh man, you know, we have to work on this. And they tried to put together something and it's too late and the quality of work was bad. They had conflicts. Nobody knew what to do. And so that didn't work very well. Now what we do instead is we ask you to do a little work every week and we ask you to submit it to us so we can see the progress. And so this way it sort of, you know, allows us to see that you're doing well. But more importantly, it sort of prompts you to do a little bit every day or every week. And so this way, when the final time comes or time finally comes to submit the report, you already have something on paper. And so that last week or two, all you have to do, just, you know, clean it up a little bit, maybe provide a little bit more explanations, maybe format it better, but otherwise you have the report done. So therefore, no, no worries if you're changing the company, no worries about resubmitting the uh, things that you already missed. But at the same time, try to do them as quickly as possible. Don't wait until the last week because... Uh, otherwise, as I said, you may run, you know, you may run out of time. Uh, but if you do have them, no problem when you attach that file with block two, you can also attach the file with block one. I, I think it will be one big block in. So that's the idea. Uh, and um, my second question was, um, I don't really understand the company. When I was reading through the companies, mm -hmm. I don't really understand what we have to do for the Exculture Kit company. Uh, if you choose a company, same thing. So the big question we have is we have this wonderful program. So in fact, you're participating in it now. <clears throat> and so our experience is one, um, when we talk to people and explain what we're trying to do here. So we will take kids from all around the world, 50 countries. We will put them in global virtual teams where they will work with people, with kids from other countries. <clears throat> like now we have, you are, if I remember correctly, you're in South Africa, right? And so we have also here Shea and Edison there in the United States. And I assume you have team members from other countries. So 
So you're kind of learning about other cultures. You're learning something about business. So we explain that. And so parents, when they understand what we're offering, they say, oh, that's interesting. I want my kid to participate. Or the teachers say, oh, that's interesting. I think it would be beneficial for my class if they could participate in. Like, for example, uh, teacher Mrs. Uh, Nishikawa. So she's the teacher for Edison and Shea. So when we explained to her what we're trying to do, she said, oh, yeah, that's interesting. We want to try it. And so uh, that's one thing we know that, you know, people like it. And second, we also know that we tested it a couple of times. And pretty much every single kid who participated, they wanted to participate again. In fact, one of the big challenges is that we have some people who now participate the third time. So we tested it twice. Now we are testing it the third time. And so we know it works. We know the kids like it. It's challenging. It's difficult. Sometimes it's frustrating. But in the end, it's very educational. But the problem we have is uh, we don't really know how to reach all those teachers, all those parents, and inform them about this wonderful opportunity, about this program. And so that's the challenge we have. So what countries do you think the kids should be uh, sort of be recruited in? Uh, how do we recruit it? Where do we advertise? What do we say? Uh, we tried all kinds of things and uh, some things seems to be working. So as I said, this semester we were able to recruit it or receive about 2,000 applications. Selected from that about 1,000 kids would seem you know, more prepared than uh, based on the readiness, uh, based on the theoretical training uh, only some of them turned out to be really prepared and then now you guys are sort of the best of the best and you're participating in this project But then we will do it again in the fall and for us the big challenge is so how do we advertise it? How do we do it again? How do we make sure that on the one hand as many people as possible know about you but equally important in fact It's extremely important only those who are truly ready apply and participate because it's a team project, right? So we don't want people who are not ready we don't want to put someone on the team who is not uh, responsible enough or not fluent enough in English or not maybe even smart enough or mature enough. Like you wouldn't want to have a person like that on your team. So we have to be very careful with how we promote the product because if I were selling the chocolates, I would want as many people as possible to buy my, pro to buy my product. And I don't care uh, you know, if they are smart or sophisticated or educated or serious or diligent. As long as they pay, I'm happy. It's completely different with exculture. We don't want anyone to participate if they're not ready. In fact, uh, we don't want their money, we want them out because if they participate, they will make, spoil the experience for the good kids like you who are you know, serious and smart and wanna learn something new and work every day and show up for every a single webinar. So you know, we have those challenges. And so that's where we need your help. So we basically need you to tell us who or where we should you know, reach the potential audiences. Should we talk to schools? Uh, should we talk to parents? Should we talk to kids? How should we reach them? Should we send them letters? <clears throat> should we try to use Facebook? Should we try to advertise on TV? How much will it cost us? Uh, what is the best, most cost-efficient way to go about it? What should be the message? Would it be some sort of a picture? Would it be a video? If so, what would be the script for that video? What would be the picture like? So, uh, you know, things like that. I think we also ask questions like, for example, pricing. So should it be free? Should we charge? How much? How often? Uh, should we offer some stipend? Should we offer some grants? Should we offer some different prices for different countries? So all of those are very difficult questions that we are not necessarily you know, sure how to answer. And so that's where we ask your help. So if you choose that company, that's basically what you will be thinking about. And hopefully with your ideas, we will be able to do it better next semester. Uh, by the way, one more thing we will ask you also, the design of the program. You are participating in this program this semester, and obviously, you know, there are some things that work well, but maybe some things that don't. And so we want you to tell us, if you have some suggestions for how it can be done better, tell us. Maybe it should be longer, maybe it should be shorter, maybe there should be more guidance, maybe there should be less guidance, maybe the report should be longer, maybe they should be shorter. Uh, I don't know, maybe communicate differently, maybe we should, you know, give a different task. So all of those are questions that we don't know the answers to and you know you being smart and being members of this uh, program maybe you will have some ideas maybe you will see some things that we didn't see so with your help we will make it better and more educational yeah. so that's it. all right so i don't see anyone else raising hands uh, so i think we've gone through all of the questions and hopefully this was helpful for your um, uh, block two answers and uh, um and so somebody is asking when we attend the webinars, does it put, put it uh, put us put us on higher level? This is a very good question, and uh, this is how I would answer it. 
anonymous adding you so I don't have the name. Um, directly, no, it doesn't help you in any way in the sense that uh, we don't give you grade for um, uh, you know attending the webinars. So there are no bonuses. There are no um, you know like your team is not more likely to win the competition just because you show up for the webinars. But there are two very important benefits uh, of being here in the webinar. One, obviously, hopefully, you learn something new. Like, for example, here we have a team uh, that attends every single webinar. And I assume each time they better understand what the task is, how to answer it. So I assume they have now much more knowledge and better understanding of what to do than anybody who doesn't watch those webinars. In fact, people who don't attend webinars ever probably have a hard time you know, answering some of those questions. So even though they don't get a direct bonuses for being in the webinar, you know, like there is no point system that gives them points for this, but they're definitely in a much better position to, um, in a much better position to answer the questions uh, when the time comes to you know, write the report, and as a result, much more likely to win the competition. Second, and I probably shouldn't be saying that, but it kind of matters too. Um, as you see, I attend every single webinar. I could outsource it to any of the many other professors, but I try to do it myself and be here. And so uh, the time will come uh, when you will be asking for recommendation letters. You will be applying maybe to college or maybe for scholarships, or maybe you will be going to the symposium in Canada, right? So, or maybe the next one will be in Grenada. And so you will be asking, you know, you will submit your application, you will be asking for recommendation letters. Uh, obviously, if we know you, that matters a big deal. Like for example, if Emily came and said, hey, can you write me a reference letter? Obviously I can say many things about Emily because I know her now. I know that she didn't miss a single meeting. I know that she's uh, asking very smart questions. I know that when I ask a question, she always provides very interesting answers in the comments here. So definitely she's smart. Like I have no doubt about that. It's, it's very visible. I don't know how old she is, but she's definitely smarter than some of my college students. So that's, you know, that's obvious. And so I can say all those things in the recommendation letter. If she applies to attend the sim uh, symposium, and by the way, we have like 700 applications for 150 spots. Obviously, you know, some of the difficult decisions have to be made as to who gets invited and who doesn't. Again, if we know those people, again, Emily, Shia, Edison here, for example, obviously, you know, we know that they are responsible. We know that they can get work done. We know that they can talk. We know that if they will, you know, be in a session with a, uh, I don't know, mayor of the city or CEO of the company, they will probably ask many questions and those questions will be smart and nice. So obviously they will be given preference. So directly, obviously it doesn't mean anything. So just because somebody is in the webinar, it doesn't guarantee anything. But at the same time, you know, it, it will play out in ways that, uh, you know, that, that may have a big benefit down the road. By the way, here is a secret also that I wanna share with you. The software that we use um, uh, for webinars, it shows me who is attending the webinar, but it also shows me if people start doing something else. Like if you are, instead of listening to the webinar, you start you know, browsing the web or checking your Facebook, uh, the system actually sees that and shows it to me. It doesn't show me what you, exactly you do, but it starts, you know, shows an icon that shows that the person is away in a different program. I don't know what exactly the person does. But, and so it's funny, sometimes we would have like 100 people or 50 people watching, but you see like 10 of them are not even paying attention. So again, we sort of know that as well. And so just because someone logs in and attends the webinar, it doesn't always mean that people actually are in the webinar. So again, that matters too. So, but yeah, no direct benefits, but in the end, it probably will make your report better. And maybe in some ways also will help you when the time comes, when you ask us for some recommendation letters or maybe some guidance or some tips. <clears throat> So do we have anything else? And so Kalina is asking if I can ask, uh, share the Google Docs. I'm not sure there is much to share here, but uh, I guess I can give you the link here. So let me see if I can unlock it and um, uh, keep, let me see if I can share, um, yeah, can edit. And so I'll, I'll copy and paste the link in the comments. And as a bonus for you for being in the webinar, you will be able to copy this link, and I don't think people who are watching the recording will be able to do that. So another benefit of being here in the webinar with me. Now, where is my chat? Is it working today or not? Seems like my chat just moves me. Oh no, here it is. So here is the link to this uh, file, and so you should be able to see it in the chat window. 
you can copy it and uh, you will be able to uh, exit that exit that file. So I'm not sure if you need it, but again, if you wanted to, here it is. All right. Anything else? Thank you so much, and I guess I'll see you next weekend. We will have a guest speaker who will talk about SWOT analysis, uh, present, present opportunities, and maybe we'll also have a quick review together of the block three. And um, uh, if you have any questions, we'll answer them as well. All right. Have a nice weekend. Okay, bye. Bye-bye, guys.